Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. I hope you're doing really well today. I am here today to do the mid-year freakout tag. I was kindly tagged in this by Richard over at Richard Reads. I will link his channel below. Um, I guess this tag was actually created in 2015 by Read Like Wildfire and Earl Grey Books, which I will link both of their channels below so that you can go check them out as well. Um, this is kind of just a mid-year check-in tag, so you're going to hear a bunch of stuff. I'm going to actually do some videos at the end of June, beginning of July, where I do an end of the year, or actually a first half of the year wrap-up sort of uh, listing out by books, but I will answer these questions for you. So let's get started. Uh, first question, best book that you've read so far in 2017? And I don't think anyone will be surprised to hear me name The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. Um, I've talked about this book a number of times on my channel, but I was lost in it. It was one of those books that when I started reading, I didn't want to stop. And I was super, super duper involved with every character, with every decision. Um, so I utterly loved it. What's the best sequel that you've read so far in 2017? So it turns out I don't read series, so I don't have a sequel, so I've changed this question a little bit. And I'm gonna tell you about the best short story collection that I read in 2017 so far. And that is The Doll's Alphabet by Camilla Grudova. This is by Fitzgerald Editions, and I think, let me see if I can tell you who it's translated by. Well, maybe it's not translated. For some reason, I thought it was translated. Um, but that's fine, because it is fantastic. It is weird and fairy tale esque and creepy, and every story will definitely take a turn you didn't expect. Um, I got this in my moth box, and I am so happy for it. And this is the best short story collection I've read this year, The Doll's Alphabet. Okay. Uh, new, re new release that you haven't read but you want to. I picked up this book when I was um, in uh, Booktopia and actually at Amherst Bookstore in Boston, and that's The Salt House by Hala Alan. Alan? Um, and I talked to you guys about this on one of those book hauls, but this is a story that is set in Kuwait City, and I think that that is super interesting because I don't know anything about Kuwait City. It's about a mother and her daughter, and their, uh, the daughter gets married, the mother reads some tea leaves and feels like something is bad's going to happen to her daughter, and the whole family kind of gets dispersed over the world. Um, and so I'm super excited about that, and I really want to read it, and I haven't, and it's new this year, so... Um, I apologize. I'm having some weird lighting issues. I know I look kind of like I'm in a cave. It's kind of dusk outside and I can't get the light right in my room. So I apologize if I look a little yellow, I guess, today. Oh, um, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I actually couldn't choose between two, so I have two. Um, Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. Um, I read Celeste Ng's first book, and now that I'm thinking about it, the name is totally escaping me. Um, but I adored it. It was fantastic. And I have been waiting with bated breath to try to get a copy of this book before it comes out. Um, I've heard nothing but good things, and she is a phenomenal writer. I love her on Twitter. The second book that I'm super, I mean, super excited is The Child Finder by Renee Denfield. Now, Renee Denfield wrote The Enchanted, which may be in my, I don't know, expanded top 10 favorite books of all time. Um, I've talked about it before on the channel, but it was one of those books that I never forget. I always recommend. So I'm super excited to see what The Child Finder is all about. And uh, yeah, no, I'm super excited about those two. Um, biggest disappointment. I really hate to say what I was most disappointed with, but I will say I didn't love Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman or Gaiman. How I mispronounce his name and I love most of his books. Um, Norse mythology just didn't hit home for me. I just found it really boring and uh, was not uh, really into it. So that was probably my biggest disappointment because I really do love him. Um, my biggest surprise, actually my biggest surprise book of the year so far has to be My Brother's Husband by Gengor Tagami. So this is my first Japanese manga I've ever read. One, you read the book, what we would consider backwards. It's like a graphic novel. Um, I'm gonna talk more about it in my wrap up for the month of June, but I never thought I would ever read uh, manga. I never thought I would buy manga and um, that this is a, 
uh, gay-themed manga about acceptance and family was even more um, amazing. So I'll talk about it more in my wrap-up, but that was probably my biggest surprise so far of the year. Um, favorite new author? That has to go to Kathleen Rooney, uh, who wrote Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk. Um, I got to meet her. I loved Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk. She is a, just so endearing and so smart and just a great person. And I really uh, have to say that she, I'm very excited about her new book and what will uh, be next for her. Um, newest fictional crush. Now, I don't really have fictional crushes. I don't think I've ever had a fictional crush in my life. So I'm going to do an author crush, and I'm going to talk about Will Schwalbe. I will link my review of his latest book, Book for the Living, where I admit that I have a crush on Will Schwalbe. Down at the bottom, he's written two books. Well, actually, he's written three books. Uh, uh, End of Your Life Book Club, which, if you haven't read, is the story of him and his mom and their book club as she treats and eventually passes from pancreatic cancer it, you will not um you will not have a dry eye books for the living is books that he connects to different parts of his life um it is amazing and it will add to your tbr and i actually have he wrote a book with a partner about email in the workplace that's like a book that you can use at work um which i have and i have bought and given out to people i work with so I have read all of Will Shalby, I think, um, but I, he is just so passionate about reading. He tells you to ask every person what they're reading, hold no prejudice, hold no judgment. I find that really, really endearing. He is so sweet. So he's probably not my fictional crush, but my real life crush right now. Um, my newest favorite character. I am in the middle of listening to Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Um, which I, I don't know, I can't, Honey, Honey Man? Is that the last name of the author? I apologize. I will link the book below. But I'm listening to the audio and I am fascinated with Eleanor. It is a dark book. It's a book that I think um, is going to surprise me. Eleanor is so proper and so endearing. It's told in her voice. I'm listening to the audio and the narrator is phenomenal. It's like Eleanor is just talking to me and she is so good. So she's probably my newest favorite character. I don't know where it's going though, so I'm a little afraid of what she's going to do to me, but I'm totally loving it. Um, book that made you cry. This will be in my wrap-up for June too, so I don't want to talk about it too much, but The Hen Who Dreamed She Could Fly. It's like this amazing fable about chasing your dreams and family and your family being who you make it and not who it was. And at the end of the end of everything, feeling accomplishment just by meeting those goals that you had in life. Teared up, won't lie. Um, what A book that made you happy. That has to be the graphic novel, The 100 Nights of Hero. I know this was big last year. I've already talked about it, so I'll link um, it down below in my graphic novels. You should read video. But um, I am a huge Isabel Greenberg fan. I've read both of her books now. I'm trying to get everything that she's ever put out. This book made me happy. I read it in maybe three hours, front cover to back cover. So good. And I'm, yeah, no, this is a good one. So you guys should read it. Um, what is your favorite film adaptation, book to film ap adaptation? I actually don't think I've seen a film that was a book first this year. Um, I don't go to a lot of movies unless they tend to be superhero movies, so I guess if you consider comic books the book, um, I would say my favorite, and I don't even know if it came out this year. No, I don't think it did. Doctor Strange didn't come out this year. So I don't even know if I've seen a lot of movies this year. So I can't really answer that question. Um, favorite review that you've written this year or booktube version? I'll actually link my review of Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk. It was my first review that I wrote that I put on Twitter that ca the author responded to and her agent responded to and it kind of got talked about and it was just super exciting for me because I loved the book so much to have the author speak to me and to have other people read it was really, really fascinatingly flattering and um, it, made, it just makes me tingle inside. So that's the one really that I've written this year that's really stuck out to me. Um, most beautiful book that you have bought or received this year? 
it goes back to the Essex Serpent, and I've gotten two copies this year. So this one came from Simon Savage over from England, and this is the Waterstone Special Edition, and it is blue, and it is gorgeous, and it has this fantastic book. Oh, I'm having trouble. Bookmark in it, and I love it. Not to be outdone, my friend Steve goes over and he buys me the paperback version of the Essex Serpent, which is the Waterstone Special Edition that has blue edges. I mean, come on. Could this book in any form be more gorgeous? Now, I have seen it in the U.S. bookstores. I almost bought a copy just so that it could have I could have three separate copies of the book. The U.S. version, it's not as pretty as these two. But that's okay, because the book is phenomenal, and you should go buy it anyway and read it. And last but not least, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Well, I firmly believe in not needing to read anything by the end of the year. But one book I have been talking about and talking about wanting to read, and I am going to get to, is My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. I have been really trying to read more Daphne du Maurier. I have bought a ton of her books. I've only read Rebecca, um, but with Simon talking about it, Lauren from Lauren and the Books talking about it, Mercedes from Mercy's Musings talking about her. I just feel like I'm missing out because I haven't read more of her. And this one is a movie, it's out, maybe coming out or soon to be out or maybe out with um, Rachel Weiss, who I love. Um, and I think I heard Simon say this may be better than Rebecca. Don't quote me on that. But, um, I'm really excited and I want to read this this year. So that is My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. So I don't know how Richard does it. He did this tag in like four minutes and I'm about to hit 12. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you like the answers. I'm doing um, some vacation, as I said in my last video. Um, thank you all for watching my last video and talking um, about all of the immigrant novels that have affected you or that you love. I am keeping a list. If you haven't watched that video, there's still time to get into it. Um, two weeks from when it came out, I have a giveaway of two novels. Um, respond. I'm getting a list and I will publish it on the video that I do when I name the winners um, so you guys can get it. Um, I have had a great time talking to you all about it. Um, and in the meantime, happy reading and thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you later. Bye!